the cuffs. I'm Adam Banks. Welcome to the show. Nelly is in the studio with me. Nelly, how's it going? It's good. How are you, Adam? I'm doing very good. Do you like that song? Yeah. Every time I hear ACDC, I'm always pumped up and, ju- and rejuvenated, ready to go. Me too. Ready to rock. You know, I'm, I'm serious. They're going to have to be a show that they're going to have to be on probably every entrance that I do for the show. Nelly, it's bright in the studio, isn't it? Yeah, it's burn, burn my eyes. Do you need me to turn turn a light off? Um, would you? That would be so I, I will turn a light off for you. It's, it's a little bright in here, and uh, I apologize. Our produ- Thank you, Adam. Yeah, no problem. Our producer sometimes. Our producer, I mean, he leaves lights when it's bright. He plays terrible songs. He unedited songs. <laughs> Just an awful producer. He is. He sucks. We need to get a new one. We need to get another one. So, so you all need to let us know. Let us know if you know of any producers looking for a job. We yeah. need one off the cuff to work with me and Nelly. Do you think we'd be difficult to work with? Well, Lord, no. No, we'd be. I don't know, though. We like things done a certain way. I'm very, I'm very yeah. Sometimes I, mean, I feel like. Particular folks, about- sometimes I feel like, especially me, I'm very. Um, I'm a perfectionist when it comes to like my work. And uh, I feel like off the cuff is my baby. And yeah. I, I want it to be like a perfect, perfect show. That's why. But you know, the good thing about off the cuff is I don't really go back and edit. What you hear is what you get. Yeah. And spring is here. Not quite summer, but summer is uh, right up on us. It's crazy that summer is almost here. I cannot believe we're already. It's gonna be in the eighties next week. We're already really. They're filling the pools. We're already five months into. 2015. That's insane. They're filling the pools. They're filling the pools They're up. The pools. They're starting to fill the pools. See, the pools open usually on Memorial Day weekend. Yeah, I know. So a lot has been going on since the last time we spoke, ladies and gentlemen. A lot went on in the world. One of the biggest interviews ever on 2020 was uh, was here recent. The Bruce Jenner interview. Bruce Jenner. Those of you all who don't know him, he is at one time was considered the greatest athlete of all time. He went to the Olympics. Back in the, was it 70s, 80s now? Something like that? Mm -hmm. Went to the Olympics and represented America and won a bunch of gold medals. I believe it was in the 70s. Etc. Yeah. And I mean, he was just America's man's man. Mm -hmm. Well, now, in 2015, he has came out saying that he has felt like his entire life he has been a woman. And so Diane Sawyer did a 2020 interview with him. Most people know Bruce Jenner in this generation as the dad from Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Mm-hmm. So, Nellie, what did you think about the interview? Me and you, we watched it together. I think it answered a lot of my questions because I'd never really I'd known anybody that was transgender. 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 But, and, uh, and, but it made me, helped me to understand how they feel. Yeah, so like I don't understand what he's really wanting to do well, as far as like his his private parts. Is he wanting to to? He's wanting not to have a penis anymore. No more dingling. No. No more. That's it. He's done. He wants a vagina. But why? It, okay, he wants because he th- he feels like he's a woman. Wow. Wow. I just I don't know that story. It just still it gives me so much anxiety talking about it. Well, that's because you're a man. Well, man, you know. And I just could not imagine like cutting off my my uh, manly. I'm gonna tell you what helped me understand him even better. Yeah. Was I told you this that there was two children on at different times the week of the interview? Yeah. That were talking, or maybe the week before. That were coming out wanting to be transgender, right? Yeah, so they were little. Yeah, well, I don't know. I mean, people that are young, they they're saying now that I'm becoming more educated on the subject. They're trying to say that kids know as early as like 18 months that they uh, are a boy or girl, right? And they've had uh, girls like that. Doctor said she heard a girl at 18 months say, "I'm a boy," right? At 18 months, I was just like, "Wow!" I mean. That's I, I guess it's hard for me to understand because I I don't have those thoughts, but now that I'm becoming educated on the matter, well, I understand they had it a they had a better. boy and a girl. Yeah, uh, those two little children. Mm-hmm. I mean, they were very very young. Yeah, well, and the mother of the little boy boy was very. Her and the dad both. Well, I mean, they loved their child. What can they do though? And they, they said, can't stop loving it. said, uh, of course, she had tears in her eyes and everything. And but she said, "I'm just sorry that it took so long for us to realize how 
serious. Well, it didn't take him too long. Honestly. Because how well, old was five it? or six years. I mean, that's not, well, I mean, at least it was at five. So, but apparently Bruce Jenner said that he found out at, a, at an early age. And he started taking hormones in the 80s. I just, I want to know See, why. so he was definitely in the Olympics in the 70s then. Right. Yeah. So uh, my question is, yeah, absolutely. It had to be the 70s, early 70s probably. My question is, how did it never get out until now? Hitting until Because recent- he was so private and only shared it with certain people. Like his sister. But I think about how amazing like your circle is for them to keep a secret like that about you. Right. That's a pretty amazing right. circle. I mean, it's All of his ex wives. That's what I'm saying. All of his ex wives never, never even told. Well, said a word. How do you think that makes them feel? Some of them probably feel embarrassed. Well, embarrassed. Inadequate. Inadequate. Think, I mean, would you feel like you were married to a to a lie? Your last 30 years well, has been yeah. a, Like, for instance, Chris Jenner, his most no, recent wife. No, because she said he was her husband. His most recent wife. I think he he cheated them, but yet but he, he was, also brought something to their lives. But he was also very honest. All right. So well, I wonder if what Chris Jenner feels like knowing that well, she said she was married. She supported them, and she was happy for him. She's married. She was married to a woman for thirty mm-hmm. years. Chris, I mean, think of it that mm-hmm. way. And I think that you know. That's I think the big thing very me, bizarre. I knew something was up when he changed his face like that. Well, he's been changing his face since the eighties. Yeah, but the but but it's just really that last time he did it was like whoa. Because he got a few things done. He got his Adam's apple mm-hmm. shaved down. He's grown his hair out. He he looks a lot more. When he more had thinner. painted fingernails, and had those painted fingernails. The hair was long. Yeah, what? But yeah, so Bruce Jenner, yeah, he's apparently now a woman, and the next time we'll see him, he will be uh, a it woman. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me either. And he's going to do a docu series yeah. on the on his transition. I'm definitely going to watch it. I want to watch I'm it. I'm definitely going to watch it because it's. I find and I don't, it but interesting. You know, did you see that he got uh, so much support from all over the country? I've not heard anything about it. Ne- anything negative from uh-uh. any type of like I mean, you know, you always hear negativity. You always hear, you know, people on YouTube and you see things people well, write. But, you know, for the majority of people in the world, there was a lot of positive feedback. There are so many people more and more that have open minds and and accept people for who they are. Yes. I think everybody's got a right to be who they want to be. I agree completely. I do not think that we should condemn them. And it's just like he said. He said, God gave me this. He to, said oh, that God made little Bruce, gave him all this talent, yeah. all this charisma, gave him the looks. And he said, but everybody's got to have that one thing. And he said, so Bruce said, God looked at him and said, okay, I'm going to give you all this, but I'm going to give you the soul of a woman. Yeah. And see how you handle that. But everybody does have that one little thing. And I thought that was really sweet the way he said that because yeah. he God still loves him. Bruce, you could tell, is a man of faith. Yes. And it's... And he you says know, I he, bet there's some uh, many, many times God was the only person he had to, well, to talk to. And he said he prayed. Yeah. And he says, God knows about this. And he said, God knew what I was going to do. He was like, so he's like, I don't. He said for a long time, though, he didn't want to transition because of his, his faith. children. His faith, his children, yeah. But like, now his kids are, he couldn't have thought. You know, I, I think that he... Can you imagine the, what all the kids' backlash would be at school? Right. If they he waited till now kids. for right. a reason. Right. They're all grown. His right. youngest daughter is 18. Mm-hmm. 18. She, he, and when she turned 18, he's like, I'm doing I can, it. I can do it. I'm doing and it. And he's, I mean, you little look, he's 65 years old. Mm-hmm. I admire him mm-hmm. for still doing it, you know, because most people will say, well, I ain't even going to bother with it now. Yeah. You know. I like but his he reasoning. He's so unselfish. I like his reasoning. He said his reasoning. He says I want to. He said I want to. I would be disappointed if I died. He says because I could get cancer and be dead in a week. He says, but I would hate to be on my deathbed and just. He said because I'd be mad at myself for never getting to experience the life that I should have lived. Mm-hmm. And he says so. I don't want to be mad at myself. Lord, I love that little black dress he showed. He bought. That was pretty. I don't know. I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. So comments like that are unnecessary. So I'm trying to. I'm trying to wrap my head around it. But uh, yeah, we're definitely gonna have to watch the 
the docu series. I just hope nobody's mean to him anywhere. Well, I think his kids ain't definitely going to be mean to him, and I think the hundred million, the fact that he's worth the hundred million dollars, doesn't cause them to be mean to him either, because mm-hmm. they want that money. Because when it all comes down to it, Nelly, let me tell you something: that Almighty Dollar has yeah. a hold of you. And if they think but that they're a part of his fortune, too. right? And if, if those kids think they can get a part of that fortune, which I think they probably are in his will, yeah. they're not going to do anything to mess it up. If they didn't support Bruce, you think he's going to leave him in his will? No. God, he's got so many kids. Oh, he's got—he's worth a hundred million dollars. Well, hell, they're all going to get a pretty good chunk. I don't think he'll give the Kardashians much. I don't think he'll make a difference. I did. Uh, oof. I mean, he lived with them kids for 25 years. You're right, you're right. Maybe not, maybe not. It's going to be interesting to see how that works out. I think, you know, the people who stay a part of his life towards his end, you know, because you can always make changes to your will. Well, they love him. To them, he's their dad. And some, and, and like Courtney Kardashian's son, that's his, Bruce's Is Mason his, Disick's yeah, grandpa. Yeah. And she says that's his grandfather. You know? And I loved, well, the one thing that I loved that he said Aubrey when kids. his kids asked him, well, what will we, will we call you? Dad, and he, he said, well, of course. He said, yes. call me dad. Absolutely. So the governor, the deba- first governor debate was via the radio. So it was kind of a big day for radio today. Yeah, the governor, I thought that was different. It was, it was different. The governors debated over the radio with uh, KSR. Uh, Matt Jones did the interview with the Republican candidate. So I don't know if he's going to have the Democrats on there, but the, he did have a Republican debate. I bet he will, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Uh, you know, a lot of people say Jack Conway is like a, almost a shoe in for that. Which something about Jack Conway, I don't know. He just he he he, he looks a lot like Harvey Dent, Two Face from Batman. Do you know who I'm yeah. talking about? Yeah, he does. There's something about him I don't know if I like. Now, something I do agree on with what uh, he did was uh, he sued. These nonprofit colleges that were pretending to uh, they they were falsifying their placement rates. Oh, okay. Uh, these they were trying to say that students were there that wouldn't. No, they were no, no not necessarily not enrollment numbers. They were uh, falsifying their placement rates on careers. Like they're a oh. career college. They're trying to say that when you come here and you graduate, we can get you a you, job in yeah. this. They were. Given false reports, oh. and they were advertising false reports, saying, "Oh, seventy-five percent or ninety-five percent of our radiologists get radiology jobs right out of here." That's not true. They, uh, the real numbers were investigated and came up with like forty-two percent get placed. Well, you you know why that is because once they get those jobs in their hometown. They're going to stay. Yeah. And, and that's their career. So. And, and uh, there was a couple colleges that he went after. My former employer, they actually uh, went after them. And uh, so, I don't know. I don't know if it's still, like, um, go, waiting to go to trial. I don't know. Yeah, but there's the big big news with that. But, so he's going to be the Democrat nominee. But uh, who do you like so far? I, I don't know. I don't right either now. because I, I swear I was a shoe in for Hal Heiner. I, I was going to work on his campaign. I was going to join his campaign. And, and, you know, but after listening to that debate, he turned me completely off. Is it Coomer? Co- Other- what, do you like Coomer? No. I don't either. I don't like Coomer. I haven't liked him from the beginning. I like the. I just feel like today, I feel like if he can't take talking to somebody without getting angry, like I like that. the Scott guy. The Mr. Scott. Yeah, I liked him. Yeah, the guy with the accent, the Kentucky accent. He just reminds me of somebody from just Pike. From, uh-huh. Or somebody from just uh, Letcher County. Yeah. Somebody just really country. Just being our governor. I would love it if somebody from back well, home. I will. I do want to say that I, I really I really liked Brashear. I think he did a good job. As you good like, as he could do. I think he did absolutely terrible. Our economy, Our economy is, cr- is crumbling. Kentucky retirement system uh, system is about to just disappear. There is more unemployment in this Commonwealth than than the last forty or fifty years in Kentucky. He has done a terrible job. I mean, our insurance has, has skyrocketed. Our taxes have raised. Just nothing positive has come under his administration. We need a governor in there that's going to actually try to bring jobs into Kentucky, cut our 
I, we need our taxes cut. I mean, maybe I should run for governor. You know who I think would be good? Who? Who I'd like to see do it? Who? Is our mayor. That would be cool. Mayor, I think he would be mayor, amazing. Mayor Jim Gray. That would be governor awesome. governor of the state of Kentucky. We should try to get Mayor Jim Gray on our podcast. And do I you tell th- him that. Do you think he would do it? I don't know he might. Do you think he would do it? I think he would. I'm I'd serious. I'd like to ask him that question. I think he would run for governor. I think he will run for governor. Did you know that he is gay? Yeah. Openly gay. I have no problem with that. I've always known that. But what's... Right, but what is crazy about it is he would actually have a great shot at winning, but do you think that at the end of the day, all these Kentuckians around the state, you know, he would win Lexington hands down, but would he win these eastern Kentucky counties because of his uh, sexual orientation? Well, realistic me, that should have nothing to do to with To you, it. but be real. But Would he? With people from Knott County and Letcher County. If they County. got any sense, they'll vote for him. Well, because he is, he's, I think he's done a hell of a job for he Lexington. He has. He would make a great governor. This place is beautiful downtown. I, I think Jim Gray would make a great governor of Kentucky, but unfortunately, I think because of his sexual orientation, the fact that he is an open homosexual, I don't think he would, he would ever be elected by the people of Kentucky. I just, I just don't. Well, yeah, but Adam, you got to realize how how much he's won by here. Just he, here. Right, but that's just here. At the state, we're talking about from Pikeville to Paducah, from Covington to Bowling Green. But they've got to see his success. They will, but they'll be, yeah, but, you know, I understand. Or our success with his guidance. Yeah. Yeah, it, it would be very interesting. Because he would be the first gay governor of Kentucky. Openly gay, mm-hmm. that is. I'm sure there were probably some gay governors that was in the closet and probably messed around on their wives under the never administration. Never got caught. And never got caught. That's what I always used to say about poor old Bill Clinton. <laughs> he just got caught. Well, Bill Clinton did get caught. The rest of them pointing fingers at him probably was just as guilty as he was. Yeah. You know, that's hilarious. That whole... That, that was such big news back and in the day. And that was so stupid. What? The fact that he... It, it affected nothing about him being a president. Well, what affected except him? Except his morals. Yeah. You know, that... I mean, but you know what? Get over it and let it go. Well, what else has been going on in the world? Oh, Lord, I don't know. What else has been going on? Well, the riots have finally calmed down. There was riots in Baltimore. Oh, my God. I know that was... Uh, that was so awful. Did you hear if the tornadoes hit... Oklahoma again. I did not. Uh, what was the name of that little town that keeps getting hit over and over? That hit that school, the, the school a year or two ago and killed those children? I have no idea. Oh gosh, I can't think of the name of it. It was so something, sad. You should have seen Something that fell out cloud. of Wait, what was it? Something. It was a tornado. Oh. A really huge tornado killed some little uh, grade school kids. Do you remember the tornado that happened in West Liberty a couple oh, yeah, years ago. Oh, yeah, that was bad. Oh, yeah. I used bad. to drive through West Liberty every like weekend on my uh, way home from Turn work. No, because I'm going to need it for later. Yeah. Why do you let things distract you so much? I mean, you were so involved in your surroundings. Like, you can't pay attention. I think I'm going to right now, ladies and gentlemen, on the air. Oh, I'm yeah, going here to, we go. I'm going to, down, I, I'm going to diagnose... Nellie. Mm-hmm. Dr. Banks is in the house. Nellie, thank you for coming. Um, you know, your tests came back clean, great. Everything looks good. Mm-hmm. Your reflexes are working. Your vitals are good. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, there was just a little thing that I'm going to diagnose you with. It's called ADHD. And mm-hmm. uh, it's basically meaning you have a attention deficit hyper disorder. Attention hyper deficit disorder, whatever it is. And uh, it basically means you need to pay me, me attention. Well, I've got something I need to tell you. Okay. Uh, you can KMA. KMA. Kiss my ass. <laughs> that, that I got is... a few choice uh, uh, what you call, uh, diagnosis I, I, for you. What is it? I'm not going there. No, I want to hear no, him. No, because we'll get in a big fight. No, I want to hear him. No, I want to hear him right now. 
Right now, I want to hear at least one. Give me one. No. Nope. Give me one. No. You said we'd have a fight. I want a fight. <laughs> right here on the air, I, I want to fight. I want to fight with you. Yeah, that governor debate got me riled up. I want to debate. I know. I don't know who the hell you want. I swear, anymore, you don't know who in the hell to vote for. You really don't. And it's so sad. It, I mean, I just... I mean, it's just like something needs to happen to change it. It really all. does. Yeah. They need to start from the beginning all over again or something. Don't Shit. they? And you know what? What? I got a feeling that's going to happen. <coughs> Did you see where they said <coughs> some people related Excuse to ISIS? Me. What? That ISIS? shot them people in Texas? What about them? They was in Texas. Who was? ISIS. ISIS was in Texas? Yes. What are they doing? Are there, somehow, they're doing stuff for ISIS. That's huge. That's, that, oh, that's scary as hell to think that they're in the United States. Mm. I mean, that's scary as hell. I don't, I've always thought, watching the news, I don't want to be one of them places where you're scared to death if you go out or do anything. Just wake up. So Mother's Day up. is uh, Sunday. Mother's Day. Uh, Nelly, do you have any plans with your daughter on Mother's Day Sunday? No. And your granddaughter? Um, I, unfortunately, am not going to uh, be able to, like, make big plans with, um, you know, my mom. I have to go to Virginia. I, this is such a busy month. I have to go home. You can't go, can't go to your mom's? I'm going to go to mom's. Oh. Yeah, I'm going to go to mom's. And then I'm going to, um, I got two weddings after that, the following two weekends. Then after that. Are you in them? No, well, oh. I'm in one. Oh, too, too many weddings. I, I'm I'm doing a no wedding policy after May. Well, all your friends will be married. <laughs> Every one of them. I mean, I I don't know. I, I, it's going to be me and a few of my friends that are going to be the only ones left. But Sad. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And then, uh, yeah, but I don't know. There's just... But, yeah, I shouldn't have said That's that. anything. What? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> it's one of those things. Nelly is a very outspoken and very... Wow. Dude, what are you doing? <laughs> and the faces she makes. And I swear sometimes I wish we I had, did nothing. I wish we had a TV show so you could see the faces she you makes. You picks on me, people. No, I don't. Yeah, do. and people say that you get raw with me. Oh, whatever. You do. People say that. Whatever. No. Probably just people, your friends. No, it's just... <laughs> you want to hear something very cool? Sure. I was at the wedding. Mm -hmm. One of my friends got married. Two of my friends got married. Together. And, of course, together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And... To each other. Jordan, my buddy Jordan, works at a prison. He's right. a prison guard. Well, his mom is the warden, assistant warden of that prison. Wow. Yes. And she came up and she said, hey, I like off the cuff. And I was oh, like, yes. Lord. And I was like, you be listening to it. She's like, yes. Yeah. She's like, hey, you know it. So she listens to the podcast. That is so a shout, out to, a shout out to her. I, cannot, I would love to meet her. Oh, she, she was cool. I, you know, I don't remember her name. I cannot remember her name to save my life. But, hey, we're talking about you. Thanks for listening. You were awesome. That's Jordan's mom. That's cool. Yeah, so it, it's just, it's always really cool. It's so cool when people come up to you and tell you they listen to your show. Like, I don't get out like you did. Like, like when I was watching the UK, uh, the Final Four game, or not the Final Four, the Elite Eight game against Notre Dame, I yeah. was out, and people would come up to me. You were with me. Oh, yeah. People would come up to us and be like, hey, you're from off the cuff. People would be like, oh, Adam makes with the podcast. Yes, that, that stuff... It makes it worthwhile oh, yeah. to do. Yeah, it was fun. And that stuff, it just makes me happy. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for listening to the show. It's always uh, fun to, you know, have you on and listening. We're on episode like 62, 63. That's wild. Wow. Did a lot without me. Well, I, you know. I just know big things. Here lately, you've just been so busy. I don't know what you've been well, doing. Well, I was sick a lot. Too. Yeah, you were sick. Are you finally feeling better? Yeah. Yeah, you for the moment. For the moment. Well, it's it's spring. Sun's coming up. Flowers are blooming. Going to big city to Cynthia and tomorrow. Are on you? Saturday. Really? For what? I gotta go see my mama. Plant some flowers. For Mother's Day. Yes. Yeah. Understand that. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, 
We'll see you. That's it. Let's go.